and welcome to the MBOM podcast, where you'll learn to master the business of yoga. MBOM is a proud part of the Wander Barn Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Amanda Kingsmith. I'm a 500 hour registered yoga teacher, a yoga business coach, and a total business geek. Here at MBOM, you'll learn everything you need to know to create a sustainable yoga business by learning from myself and guests from around the world about how they built their yoga businesses and about how you too can become a successful yoga teacher, studio owner, and much more. All right, let's dive in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the MBM Podcast. I am really excited that you're joining me for today's episode of the show. And this episode of the podcast is brought to you in part by Offering Tree, which is my recommendation to yoga teachers for all things yoga business and digital marketing. And we're going to be talking about websites in this episode of the podcast, which we'll get to in just a moment. And I know that this can be a bit of a challenging topic for many yoga teachers who didn't become yoga teachers because they wanted to create websites. And I really love Offering Tree because they're so, so simple to use when it comes to setting up your business and particularly setting up your website. And I wanted to share a testimonial from Nicole, who's the owner of Aloha Wellness and Fitness. And she used to hate working on her website. And now this is what she has to say after using Offering Tree. I hated even thinking about my website before, and that's not necessarily something that someone with a personal business should be saying. But truth be told, I just hated it. Everyone's like, where's your website? I'd be like, here, here's my email, contact me. And now that I have Offering Tree, it's not like that. Everything I need is in my Offering Tree site, and I'm able to go in and change it on the dime. So if that doesn't, you know, convince you to go at least check out Offering Tree, I don't know what will, head on over to offeringtree.com forward slash MBO. And we'll talk a little bit more about Offering Tree a little bit later on in the episode. But for now, let's get into today's episode of the show. This week on the podcast, I'm really excited to be rejoined by Angela Seely. Angela is a yoga teacher, web designer, and the founder of Good Karma Works. And she came on the podcast in August 2021 to share tips for creating a DIY website, how to know when to hire somebody to help with your website, and more. And we're doing kind of a part two to that episode. So in this episode, we build off of that to discuss the steps that come next in your business after you have a website. So once you put all the hard work into creating your website, what comes next? Angela shares her top tips for branding and marketing yourself and your business once you've created your website, as well as how to utilize your website to the best of your ability to help you drive clients and much more. So we're going to dive into lots of good stuff in this episode, and I hope that it's really helpful for you and your yoga business. All right, without further ado, here is Angela. Angela, welcome back to the podcast. I'm excited to have you here with me today. Excited to be back here, Amanda. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, absolutely. So the last time we talked was in the summer, summer of 2021. And I was back home in Canada visiting family. I believe you were back home in the US visiting family. And now you're living over in Spain. I'm down in Mexico. So we've had, you know, lots of big changes that are going on um, on top of, you know, all this exciting business stuff that we're going to talk about. And I was thinking for those people who haven't listened to our first episode together, do you want to just start by briefly introducing yourself and telling people who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Angela Seely. I'm from Alabama originally, but based out of Barcelona, Spain. And I run an agency called Good Karma Works. We work with wellness professionals um, doing branding, web design, business strategy, and uh, I also was a wellness professional myself in the wellness space for about eight years, teaching yoga and doing massage. So um, through that avenue, I started offering, I actually offered my yoga studio where I was doing my yoga teacher training to um, redo their website for them. And from there, started just getting through word of mouth clients who came in and needed help with their websites. And so here I am today. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing all of that. And um, 
the last time we chatted, we talked a lot about like just how to kind of approach your website. I think you and I are both very aligned that for yoga teachers and wellness professionals, having a website is something that can be really beneficial for your business. And I think that oftentimes yoga teachers are like, well, I don't know how to build a website. And they also don't have a big budget. You know, that it's not like they're a big company that has a couple thousand dollars to invest in this perfect website. And you and I talked a lot about, you know, how to DIY your website, when to know, when to bring somebody in, how to find somebody that's going to be a good fit, um, which I think is, you know, super helpful to people who are getting started because I think it's easier said than done to be like, hey, you need a website in your business. And people are like, cool, how the heck do I do that? And so obviously we'll put a link to that in the show notes so people can go check that out. But we're really going to just continue that conversation today with what happens like once you have a website. Because I think that sometimes we think of it as like one and done, sweet, I've got this website. Now this website can just like work for me. But that's not... I mean, that's not really the truth, right? Like we have this website, which is which is great. It's kind of like our digital storefront, but there's a lot of other things that kind of need to happen when it comes to, you know, managing our websites, building our brands, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Yes. I am a hundred percent in agreement with you that um it definitely it's not always the first step. Um, I am a huge proponent of people DIYing their website and asking for help when needed. Um, I actually built my you know, own yoga website back in the day um, before I actually had a business of doing that. And, um, and I often find that clients, when they come to me, they say, oh, I want to start a business. I need a website. And, and oftentimes they think that they need it way before they actually do. Um, you know, they don't, they're not really clear in their business model. They're not really clear in who their target audience is, um, how they're going to reach that audience. Uh, so often, a lot of times I'll even have, you know, conversations with people where I'm like, come back to me in six months when you have this figured out and you've even, you know, um, done some market research and you've tested out, you know, teaching if you're a brand new teacher, fresh out of yoga teacher training, it might not necessarily be the time for you to go and build your website. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that we need to kind of consider with our businesses for us to be able to build a website. Like, you know, we need to understand what we want on the website. Like, what do we want on our homepage? What are we calling our business? You know, what are the words we're using around our business? What are the things that we're actually offering? And it's so interesting that you brought this up because I was just having a conversation for the podcast with um, a really good friend of mine who I did my 200 hour training with. She was one of my first podcast guests in early 2016. And I just had her back on the show because she's gone through so much growth over the last like six years in her business. And she was talking about this exact thing, like about two years after doing her teacher training, she'd been teaching at studios and she's like, okay, I need a website. And then she's like, but I don't know how to build a website and I don't know like what to put on it. Like what what the heck do I even (laughs) like put on this thing? So maybe even like backing up a little bit is like, if somebody's listening and they're like, okay, I know I need a website, but I'm not sure even where to start with like my brand or my yoga business, what are some, like, where do, where do we start? Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, I, I typically, one of the first things that I ask is, uh, for my clients is what, what do you want to be the primary call to action on your website? What are you, what is the action that you want, um, users when they land on your website to take? So, Um, Are you teaching, you know, private yoga classes and you want to focus on that? Um, Then, you know, your call to action would be for them to uh, book in an appointment with you or maybe schedule, you know, a free intro call. Um, Are you trying to sell online courses and you want to have, you know, kind of like passive income or reoccurring revenue? So that would be something where you would want to, you know, grow your email audience, um, maybe have like a blog that you're, you're working on regularly. Um, so that would be, you know, a a website where you want to like build a bigger audience to have a bigger funnel 
to funnel into those courses and trainings that you're offering. Um, so it really depends on kind of your vision of your business, um, of the model that you want to have. <clears throat> and, um, and yeah, just getting clear in that path in your intention in, you know, how you want to work. Um, and then kind of going from there of like, okay, and who do I want to work with? And um, where do I want to work? You know, what hours do I want to work? So those, those are kind of, you know, some of my, my starting points. And then just getting really clear um, in what you are offering and go ahead and, you know, jotting those down, like write down your services or, or um, you know, start outlining what you would um, want to teach in your courses. So those are kind of like some first, very first steps. Yeah, for sure. Those are great. So thank you for those. And so then like, let's say we we do all of that and we've got some offerings, maybe some classes, some privates, and we we build this website and we're so stoked on it because we DIY'd our website, which I did my first one too. And it's like, it feels so good to do that yourself. You're like, I'm a total boss. Like I'm a boss lady. I've built my own website. And then you're kind of like, okay, now I've put this stuff out here. You know, where are the people? Like once we've got the website, you know, what do we, what do we kind of need to do next? Cause I think this whole, like, you know, I build it, they come is not really the reality, especially in 2021, 2022, when there are so many websites and so many things existing on the internet. Absolutely. And I will say, um, bravo on completing your first, you know, website, your DIY. Um, I think, uh, anyone can relate who's done this before that it takes way more time and energy than you initially estimate, um, whether or not you're doing it on your own or you're working with, um, a designer, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of momentum and energy that goes into building your website. And um, that that's one of the reasons why with my agency, I have like a very streamlined process for web design where we try to launch within like four to six weeks um, of the design process from start to finish because that momentum, it's not sustainable. You know, it's like, you got to get in there, you got to push through and then you got to launch. And then you kind of need to like, pat yourself on the back, maybe go have a spa session, (laughs) take a break from it, you know? Um, However, that is just one of like the first steps, you know, to launching your business or or putting yourself out there, you know, setting yourself up um, with an online presence. It is in no way the, you know, sit back, like if I build it, they will come like, oh, I have these amazing offerings. Like, I'm just going to sit back and have all these clients, you know, come to me and purchase my course. That That is not true. And I hate seeing um, when, you know, clients of mine that happens because I want their businesses to thrive. Um, you know, we're all in the space of of wellness, of, of healing others, of taking what we've learned, um, the magic, you know, in, of yoga and sharing that with the world. And, and I want people to succeed in that. Um, but oftentimes, you know, I find that after, after the launch, they don't really have any plan in place. Um, so my, my first number one step is, and, and this, you know, might seem like, oh yeah, of course, but often people don't forget or or overthink this step um, is, is spread the word. So make sure you have a launch email to send out. You can send it, you know, through your Gmail or Yahoo, your personal account to um, close friends, to family, to any colleagues, maybe someone that you did your yoga teacher training with um, just announcing it, letting them know to be proud of it. Um, You can announce it on social media, Um, you can ask, you know, friends, uh, to share it with other people, you know, there's no, there's no harm in asking for help in spreading the word. Amazing. Yeah. That's a great first tip is so just telling people that, you know, so even if you don't have a big following or like an email list or maybe a big, a big developed email list or a big social media following, it's just getting that website out there 
getting your brand out there in whatever capacity you can so people can start like knowing what you're actually up to. Exactly. And so a lot of times, even if it's, you know, family members of yours, your your aunt that lives in Ohio, uh, you know, that you think, okay, well, she's not going to be a yoga client. However, she might be talking to a friend of hers who is, you know, having a lot of back pain issues and mobility issues. And she's like, oh my gosh, my, you know, my niece offers these amazing online private yoga classes you should try with her. And there you go. You have a new client, you know? So, um, it's, it's letting, it's reminding people, uh, not just once, but multiple times what you're doing and what you're offering so that you are on their mind, um, to essentially spread the word for you. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. I think that that's a great piece of advice. And I know this was something I did when I first started like my podcast and my yoga business was I I built out like, you know, a website and an email list and social media and stuff like that, but then shared on like my personal social media. And like my first few followers were like, you know, my parents and like some good friends and stuff like that. You gotta start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, totally. (laughs) For sure. I love that. Amazing. And I I also would just add on to that. If you start out and you launch and you don't have any paying customers yet, another, another really great option is to, you know, offer a free trial class in exchange for someone to leave you like a stellar testimonial or a review. Um, so that, you know, people can see that you are working with other people. Um, They can read for themselves that um, your clients, even though they don't know that they were free um, doing an exchange, you know, had an amazing experience. Um, And then it also just helps you build your confidence for um, talking to future clients. Yeah, for sure. I think that that's great. Like, you know, being able to go to a website and see testimonials of what other people have to say is... I think going to entice people to buy, you know, what you have going on, especially if maybe they're like not familiar with you or they haven't heard too much about your services before. I think testimonials can really help with that. And it's one thing when I'm teaching and training yoga teachers, especially like newer yoga teachers who are doing, you know, their first training. I'm like, even if you can get a testimonial from each other, you know, that's a great way to start. You can put it on your resume. You can put it on your website once you build one you know, it's, it's great to have that type of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm often the first person to leave a testimonial for one of my clients, you know, when I'm building a, out a website or branding for them. Um, I'm like, I'll try out a class with you and then, and then I'll leave you a testimonial. So you have one. Amazing. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and so what else can we do as we're kind of like, you know, we've launched our brand and website and how do we actually get these things kind of, you know, out into the world? Yeah. So I think, um, I always say that when you launch, that is your phase one of your website. And from there, you should always think about, get clear, visualize, um, you know, set some intentions around what are the next steps for growth. So what does, um, phase two and phase three look like? Um, a lot of times clients come to me and they're like, okay, I need a website with a podcast and all these courses and trainings and, um, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, whoa, 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 that all sounds amazing. Um, but you know, you're not going to launch your website for another year because you're going to have to set all of that up and get really clear in your offering. So I was like, what is a phase one? Um, of, of what we can do, you know, in the next two months to launch a website, um, because you start getting traffic, you start getting the word out. And then from there you can build out your courses, you know, later on. So, um, uh, one of the things that is quite popular right now for clients of ours is doing just like a one page, simple, you know, endless scroll homepage for people that maybe don't have, um, a lot of offerings, um, but they do want to have an online presence. They do want to be searchable and found, um, locally or, you know, uh, globally, uh, for their services or their products. Uh, so then, you know, after that, what, what does phase two and phase three look like? 
Also, you know, if you want to do a course, maybe phase two is uh, looking at different course platforms, getting really clear in your courses, and then launching those three to six months down the road. Right. So looking at doing some more like staged sort of website launching and branding. So you don't have to have like every single thing you ever want to do on your website before you launch it. And in fact, it can be better to kind of get it out there, get some traffic on it, maybe get some people seeing who you are and what you're all about, and then continuing to launch in phases. Exactly. Yeah. And I would say, you know, finding a rhythm that works for you to keep the momentum going so that you don't burn out. Um, Oftentimes, you know, people start out with very ambitious of like, I'm going to be posting three blog posts a week. And I'm like, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> you know, some people do it. That's not me. Um, and I'm very, I, I always salute those that can, you know, do that, produce that much content. So, you know, uh, how are you going to grow? How are you going to get in front of more people? So maybe that's through producing content, um, whether it is a course or a podcast or, you know, a regular, regularly blogging. Um, another great way is to, you know, partner and collaborate and try to um, get on other, you know, websites that are maybe similar um, in business, uh, but not doing exactly what you you are doing. So that's what I'm doing right here. That's one of my uh, ways to get in front of other audiences is to, you know, be on podcasts, be a guest on a podcast and um, reach out to your audience that you spent, you know, all of these years building up. It's way easier for me to, um, to come on as a guest uh, to your podcast than to try to get all of those people to come and see my site um, if I wasn't on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think there's lots of great, like, kind of collaborative ways of like marketing your business. And I think podcasts can definitely be like an excellent one where if you've got, you know, some value to add to a show, then you have this opportunity to also share like what you're doing, right? Which can be a great way to get your business out there, your offerings out there, have more people on your website, et cetera, et cetera. Um, One thing I wanted to ask you about is the importance of SEO. Like, obviously, if we're DIYing our website, we're probably not SEO masters. And maybe there's somebody out there who is yoga teacher <laughs> slash website <laughs> SEO master. But I feel like for me, this is one thing like putting my website out there, you know, I was starting to share and then starting to add to it, kind of like we've been talking about. But I feel like SEO is one of those things that always was like, I feel like I should do this, but it kind of is this thing that I don't really fully understand the importance of. What are sort of your thoughts on that? And especially when we're starting out. Sure. Uh, I will preface this with saying that I am no SEO expert myself, um, but I do have some understanding of it and always try to um, optimize my sites that I'm building for clients for search. Um, and my main suggestion around that is really just th- like putting yourself in the shoes of your client or your target audience. You know, what are they going to be searching for um, and where are they going to be searching on it? Um, so in some cases, you know, if you are teaching locally um, and you want to, you know, maybe open a studio, then yeah, it makes more sense that you want to optimize uh, your website for, you know, yoga in, um, New York city, or, you know, like you want to focus on the location. Um, however, if you are offering, you know, online classes that people can join from anywhere, um, it, it might be harder to actually rank, you know, in search. So maybe, in that case, you want to spend a little more time focusing on, um, social media. Um, so yeah, just really thinking about where your audience is and how they're going to find you. Um, in some cases, you know, it might not make sense to really focus that much on SEO, especially if you're not going to be producing content regularly, like yourself, Amanda, your business, you are producing content regularly. Um, and you are, you know, making sure that you're including those keywords, um, in your 
page titles, your descriptions within the content itself that you're producing, you know, within the titles on the page, um, within the images. And I think that that's just like a really simple and easy way where you don't need to have all of this like advanced, uh, you know, SEO tools and strategy. Um, and you don't need to pay a lot of money. Uh, SEO can, can be quite expensive to pay uh, for outside help. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, free resources that you can go to um, on YouTube, uh, just looking up, you know, to have a bit of an understanding of it, a baseline understanding, especially if you're DIYing your website. Yeah, thanks for that. And I feel like I've definitely found that in my experience with SEO, it's been like, okay, it's really expensive to get like really good kind of like top quality help, like to the point where you're going to get really good rankings Mm. or you can kind of do some like really basic things to your website, which are pretty simple and straightforward, but obviously not going to be like nearly as effective. So I feel like it's kind of this interesting realm where it's like, you can kind of understand the basics of it and do that pretty simply, but to, to get to the next level just feels like, you know, kind of like a big jump, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think with, with SEO, it is this kind of like scary, dark subject matter that a lot of people don't, it's very confusing for a lot of people. And I will say that I have, um, friends and clients that, you know, work with, um, SEO agencies to optimize their website. And they, you know, they tell me what they're paying. And a lot of times, you know, I will say SEO is a long-term game. So it's not something that's going to overnight, you're not going to have like, uh, uh, you know, 50% more, uh, traffic or clients. It's something that you have to consistently work on for, you know, several months, even several years at a time. Um, and, and, friends and clients of mine, oftentimes when they're paying these kind of higher prices, I ask them, what are you getting in return? Like, what are they doing? Are they producing content for you? Are they updating your content? Are they, you know, boosting performance on your site? And they don't really know what they're doing, um, which I find quite interesting because I'm like, if I was paying that much per month, I would want to have like a clear outline of what is happening and what are the expectations, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I honestly feel like it's like another language. Like it's as if somebody who speaks fluent English, but speaks like no Spanish is all of a sudden working with a Spanish speaker. And they're like, I think I got like the overall gist of what's going on, but I don't really know what's going on. You know, like, I feel like that's kind of like working with somebody at high level with, with SEO. Exactly. Yeah. But, but I will say to add to your question about SEO, like one of my points was to, you know, look at what's working to reflect um, if you do launch, you know, a new marketing campaign or, or, you know, in your, your, your marketing it on social media, you're sending out, um, newsletters about it, you know, maybe you wrote a blog post or you were, um, a guest on some podcast, you know, you can, uh, all websites, it's very easy to add Google analytics or whatever, you know, native analytics is included in your platform. And it's very easy to go in there and see like, where is this traffic coming from? Um, And you can see kind of from there, like where people, you know, even converting and signing up. Um, You can also ask people if, if someone reaches out to you um, and, you know, wants to schedule a free 15 minute um, intro and, and is interested in, you know, taking private classes with you, you can always ask like, and how did you find me? Um, and you can keep tabs of people that way. And then from there, you can kind of see maybe if you have a budget later on down the line to spend a little bit more money on, um, you know, advertising on social media or, or paid ads on Google or, you know, paying someone to, um, maybe give your website a performance boost. You know, there's, there's so many ways that you can go, um, for, for optimizing your website and increasing traffic. But the first step is really like understanding, you know, what your baseline is and what is working and what is not. Yeah, for sure. And so do you have recommendations on like, kind of like how often to look at that? 
say every three months is a good kind of like timeline to see. Um, yeah, I think monthly, unless you have like a really high traffic website might be too much. Um, but especially if you, it's also really nice. One thing I do on Google Analytics and any other platform that I'm using, I also use Google Webmaster Tools, which is free, is you can mark um, when you've made changes on your website. So if you say you want to relaunch um, a page of yours, um, a sales page, for instance, you can mark in there when that was done, or maybe you want to, you know, redesign your blog detail pages. Um, you can look look in there, and you can sometimes see quite a significant change in the traffic um, to your website around that time. Okay, yeah, that definitely makes sense. And so, just kind of building it into your like. CEO time or your like regular schedule to make sure that you're checking into that pretty regularly. I feel like this is something that I've always <laughs> struggled with. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you it's know, hard. you're just like you're just like on the hamster wheel, kind of like doing doing the daily grind, and then it's like, oh, a year went by and I haven't checked this. I wonder how it's doing. <laughs> yes, yes, no, and I think you know, carving that time out for reflection. Um, I really kind of like doing it quarterly. There are some things that I do monthly as well, but you know, you can look back in three month period and see how many things that you've you've accomplished, like how you've progressed in your business. Um, and I think it's also nice to for that time to celebrate, you know, and to look at the data a little bit and to see what's working and um, and what's not, you know. And then from there, that just helps you be more efficient in how you use your time in your business so that you can free up more time to spend with your family, to travel, to, you know, go to other yoga classes. <laughs> hey, yoga teachers, we're just taking a quick break from the podcast episode to talk about Offering Tree and online courses. When it comes to courses, there are so many different ways that you can go about creating them. You could create a step-by-step -step video course that teaches students about a specific skill or specialization. You could sell or rent on-demand videos, repurposing your online classes, or you could decide to bundle your courses or classes with a membership instead of selling them as standalone items. Every yoga business is different, but if you want to start offering on-demand video content, I recommend using Offering Tree. First of all, you'll have complete control of who gets your content, including who can see it and who can download it. You get unlimited video uploads and you can offer content as a part of a membership, charge one-time fees, or use sliding scale pricing. Drip content out over time, offer limited access rentals, sell recordings, and so much more. The possibilities really are endless, and that's just one reason why I love Offering Tree. But don't just take it from me. There are so many users of Offering Tree that really, really love the software as much as I do. Chrisanne, a yoga teacher based in Colorado and the owner of Love Sauce Yoga, shared, I just want to say thank you so much for this amazing website builder. Not only has it uplifted my confidence as an online yoga teacher, but it's helped me to find my niche in the yoga teaching world and connect with students. So if you're looking to get started with a website for your yoga business, or you're looking for an online tool that's easier and cheaper than what you're using now, definitely check out Offering Tree. And because you listen to MBO, you'll get a special discount. Just head over to offeringtree.com forward slash MBO for 15% off an annual plan or 50% off three months. And don't forget that everyone gets a 14 day free trial. Once again, that's offeringtree.com forward slash MBO. All right, now back to the show. Yeah, for sure. I think sometimes we can get really overwhelmed by like all the things to do in our business. And I actually feel like being organized with them can actually be helpful. Like, I mean, obviously that I feel like that's such like an obvious statement, but at the same time, I think it's like, we can get really overwhelmed by like, Oh, I have all this website stuff to do or all this branding stuff to do, or I need to check how it's going, blah, blah, blah. But if we have it just in our calendar, you know, every three months you check in, maybe you keep track of it in like a spreadsheet or something like that you know, that's only going to take you probably 30 minutes to look at that, 
analyze it, decide what's working, what's not, and then move forward from there versus if it's kind of like on your mind constantly or you're doing it like once a year and it's a way bigger task. Exactly. Yes. And and to your point on that, um, one of my other big requirements for success, something that I see with my clients as well, is is creating a support circle for you in your business and in your business growth. So having an accountability partner, you know, working with a coach or um, even joining, you know, a mastermind group or something, um, but having a support circle of people that can hold you accountable for, um, for, you know, taking those action steps to move forward towards your goals, um, for making sure that you, you know, make that time to reflect in your business of like what's working well and what's not. Um, you might see, for instance, if you're teaching um, group classes and you're also teaching privates, uh, your group classes are oftentimes, you know, shared with the studio. If you have a really high um, attended class, you might be getting paid really, really well. However, if you have a, a low attended class, maybe you have a time slot that doesn't work for people. Um, you know, you might see that like, wow, the, the time that it, I spend going to a studio setting up, you know, um, isn't really making sense compared to what I'm able to make teaching online virtual private classes from home, you know, then from there, okay, I want to teach more privates. I really enjoy that. How do I get in front of a target audience of people that can afford privates? Um, and how, you know, what kind of people do I want to work with? Do I want to work with people that are aging and maybe more vulnerable, um, or people that have injuries, you know, those kind of people aren't going to necessarily feel comfortable going to a group, you know, our power flow class, let's do 20 chaturangas. (laughs) Um, So just, you know, getting really clear in like where those people are, who you want to be working with. And going back to my original uh, recommendation is making sure that you have someone to hold you accountable so that you can move forward in your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that recommendation. I worked with a business coach quite closely for the first, I don't know, six months to a year that I was running MBOM. And it was so helpful just to have like somebody weekly to talk to about doing different tasks and getting different things out there and running ideas, you know, by them and stuff like that. Cause I think sometimes, and I think we, we, we can do it alone, right? Like we're totally capable of doing that, but I think that it can be a lot more challenging. And also you can just kind of feel like you're like out at sea bobbing in this like big body of water all by yourself. And you're like, when's the lifeboat coming? Like I want out of this water. Cause it can just be like, there's a million things that you can do in your business. And it's like, what's most important, you know, like what's actually going to propel you forward next. And really only you can make that decision for yourself. But I think having somebody to kind of talk that through with can be super helpful. And then it can guide you with like, you know, like we were talking about before, what phase two of your brand and your business is and what phase three is. And, you know, am I launching a course this year or am I launching a podcast? We're probably not going to do both at the same time. So yeah, I, I think that that's a great tip. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you and I both have like invested, you know, with coaches and, uh, and people to support us in our business growth over time. Um, I did as well when I when I first decided to launch Good Karma Works, um, working with another designer who had a similar you know business that I wanted to uh, kind of mimic, and she actually didn't even offer coaching on her website. But I just was like, I'm so drawn to you know her offerings and her website and how she packages everything. Um, so I wrote to her, you know, and I was like, Hey, would you mind, um, you know, offering, uh, me some coaching to help me get my agency and my business set up. Um, I actually even reached out to someone the other day that I heard on a podcast who offers a service similar to mine, um, for a web maintenance plan, which is something that I offer after, um, people have already launched their business, which is a great, um, kind of way to keep 
me or my agency on your team to, to be with you when you do need changes on your website, when you do need content edits. Um, anyways, I reached out to someone who has a much bigger agency than myself, and he has a thriving web maintenance plan with like 300 clients. And I just wrote to him and I was like, can you help me, you know, like take my business to the next level? I was really impressed with your podcast. And he um, was super nice, wrote back to me and we set up a call and he was like, I'm not even going to charge you because I just love seeing other businesses, you know, giving them advice from what we've learned um, and, and seeing them grow as well. So, you know, you'll be surprised if you do reach out to someone who maybe has launched a course, you know, similar to something that you want to launch. I think there's enough space in the business of yoga and healing and wellness, um, that we're not really competitors to each other. You know, I think, um, even if you're launching something similar, you might have a very different audience, um, or, you know, a different price point, you know, so reaching out to someone that you're seeing that maybe is a few steps ahead of you or, you know, has done the work is, has been in the business a few years longer. Um, more often than not, they're super excited that, you know, they're in flattered that you've reached out to them and oftentimes are even willing to give you, you know, free advice and, um, and coaching. And if you don't have a budget for it, you know, you can always ask someone that you did your yoga teacher training with, you know, maybe you both want to launch, um, a new brand and a website. You can, you know, be each other's accountability buddies in making sure that you achieve your goals and your tasks each month. Yeah. I love hearing that story. That's so awesome. And I think even like, maybe there's somebody you can do a trade with, like maybe there's somebody who's kind of new, but is like, you know, interested in your services as well, that you could do some sort of a trade with. I know I did a trade with a friend who is a yoga teacher and a life coach. And so she did life coaching with me and we, and in exchange for business coaching. And it was cool because we both got to you know, have experience within our own realms of coaching and, and see like the difference in the way we coach and stuff, but we got to work together. And, um, yeah, I feel like that was like kind of a fun way, fun way to do that. So that's just another idea of if you have somebody in mind, maybe, or a friend that does something that you could use their services and they might be interested in yours, but you don't have the budget to pay for it. A trade could be a nice idea. Exactly. Yes. And I know you offer, um, coaching as well. So I'll just put a little plug in for you that if uh, a yoga teacher listening out there needs uh, some coaching to help take their business to the next level, you know, you, you also um, offer that. <laughs> You're so sweet. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Amazing. So we've talked about a lot of different tips of kind of like, you know, what we do after we've launched our website to kind of actually get our brand and our business out there. Did you have any other tips that you wanted to share today? Um, I think that is a good, yeah, I think that's a good place to kind of summarize what we've talked about today. Um, I, I will, will, I guess just leave with some closing thoughts of that, you know, if you feel like it's hard, if you feel like you're lonely, um, if you're lo- comparing yourself to other, you know, um, yoga teachers out there that maybe um, look like they're thriving and doing really well, um, oftentimes, you know, they're having the same struggles as you, um, and they definitely didn't do it alone, you know. Um, so just just keep, you know, working at it. Um, yes, yeah, spreading the word, like getting clear in your t- intentions. Um, looking at what's working and also make sure that you have a support circle, you know, to help you grow in your business and um, hold you accountable for um, those milestones and those small steps even that you can take to improve the quality of your life, you know, so that you can spend um, more time on your own well-being and health and, um, and share that with others. Yeah, for sure. I love that. And and also just like being able to spend more time on like what you're really good at. Like I think for a lot of us as yoga teachers, it's like we don't become yoga teachers because 
were really excited to design a website. I mean, maybe some people out there do. And if that's you, that is super, super awesome. If that's you, give give me a call. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. But I think like for most yoga teachers, it's like, oh my God, I have to build a website. Like I had no idea that that this was something I needed to do to like, you know, teach yoga and have a sustainable business in this industry. And so I think that really having, you know, that network and that support system and, you know, people who can coach you and advise you and and support you with this is, is hugely important because I think that it's one of these things that once we're able to kind of allow people to support us with it, it means we get to spend more of our time doing what we're really good at and what we, what we really love to do, which I think for most of us is teach yoga. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I totally in agreement with you there. And I think, um, like I said, that, that a lot of times people think they need a website way before they actually do. Um, so, you know, think about ways that you can grow your business going out, meeting people face to face, uh, setting up your social media first. And then, you know, from there, um, making sure that you have a viable, service that there's a, you know, an an audience that is willing to pay the prices that you want to charge, um, to lead your beautiful life. And, um, and then, you know, starting out with like, what's the bare minimum for, uh, what I need to launch, uh, something just really small. And then, you know, what is the growth for that? What, what do I see myself doing, um, three to five years from now, you know, do I want to be teaching 20 classes a week? Uh, cause I know burnout for yoga teachers is a very real thing. Um, and being underpaid is a very real thing. Uh, I definitely have been there and, and done that, you know, running around all over the city, teaching at various studios, teaching privates and people's homes. Um, so thinking about like, what are ways to, that you can support yourself financially and through your business um, that allows you to teach without burning out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I uh, did that for a couple of years as well and was like, doing this full time is definitely, you know, not for me, for me personally. And it seems like for you as well, you know, we have other different passions that we've stepped into that have supported us. But I think that's really when I use the words like create a sustainable business, like to me, it's got to be sustainable financially, but also energetically. Like we need to be able to continue to do that. And I mean, it's going to be almost virtually impossible to teach like 25 classes a week and run from studio to studio and private to private. If you get sick or you get injured or you know, you have a big life change, like you have a baby or, you know, makes moving very, very difficult and stuff like that. So I think there's definitely lots of things to consider with that. Exactly. Yes. And on, on the, the topic of like comparison, you know, I, I see all of these things, uh, out there, especially on social media of, you know, how I grew my business to six figures and how I got to six figures and, you know, three months with my yoga business. And it's like, a congratulations, that's impressive. Um, but B, like, you know, is that your path? Is that is that what you're seeking out? And I would say that, you know, for most of us that that started out, you know, or decided to to go on the path of being a yoga teacher and 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 sharing the practice of yoga, um, it our number one goal wasn't to make money, you know, we 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 were driven by this common goal. Um to share and to heal others and to, you know, leave a lasting positive impact. So, um, you know, thinking about like, well, okay, maybe I don't need to make six figures, but like, what do I need to make, um, to live a comfortable life, to be able to, um, reinvest in myself, to do the trainings and get the education that I need, uh, the continued education to keep growing, you know, in, in my own knowledge of the practice. Um, I think is is very important, way more important than having a website. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. And I, I think that's a good place to start wrapping up. Can you share a little bit more with listeners about you know the services that you offer, how you work with yoga teachers and where they can go to learn more about that? Sure. Yes. So you can 
check out my website at goodkarmaworks.com. I've got a few um, business launch plan guides that you can download that actually when clients come to me um, and you know they say, I want a website, but I'm not necessarily ready. I often say, okay, well, the first thing you can do is go and download this business launch guide, which kind of lays out step-by-step um, some things you need to do in getting really clear in your business, your target audience, and your offerings. Um, also a little bit about like your branding, like what, you know, what do you want it to look and feel? Um, how do you want people to feel, you know, when they kind of land on your page? Um, and then I also offer if someone isn't quite ready and needs that accountability partner to help them even get their content ready um, for building a website, I offer a business strategy plan, which is a four-week plan. And often um, that's for someone who kind of just needs help getting really clear in all of those things um, before, you know, moving into a branding and a website design. So we also offer um, branding packages for people that um, can include, you know, logos, color palettes, um, a full complete brand guide. We also, you know, we'll do social media posts. Um, and then that brand guide also will help you so that you can do that stuff and create branded material moving forward. And then for web design, we offer um, packages for WordPress web design. And we do fully customized designs using uh, one of the most popular themes out there called Divi, which Amanda, I know you're familiar with since you Mm -hmm. use Divi. Um, So that's something that, you know, once you have your branding, once you've done kind of the business strategy and you're ready to move forward into the web design phase, um, that's a package that we offer. And then lastly, we like to continue that relationship with our clients. We like to be there on our team. Um, so oftentimes I'll have someone, you know, come back to us for like the phase two and the phase three of their website, and we can, you know, build out additional pages for them. I also have a web maintenance plan that I recommend um, people that build their website with us. But sometimes we also have clients that didn't build it with us, um, but maybe felt a little over their head. Maybe they DIY their website or uh, they you know, worked with someone else, but they don't really feel like they can reach out to them for maybe technical support or support in you know, doing content edits or building new pages. So then we would also offer that. And that's um, just a low monthly fee where we make sure your website stays safe and secure. And then um, we also offer um, for doing updates and design changes at a discounted rate. Amazing. Lots of good stuff. And so if people want to learn more, follow along, get in touch, all that good stuff, where, where can they go to do that? Yeah, they can um, do that on our on my website as well. Uh, fill out the contact form. They can also go follow on Instagram at Good Karma Works Agency, and they can send me a DM there. I'm happy to um, have a chat with any of your followers as well. If they want me to take a look at their website, I'm always happy to connect with other wellness entrepreneurs and yoga teachers, or even if they're inter- if they're thinking about a website and they have some questions as well, I'm happy to um, have, have a you know, free 30-minute chat with them. Amazing. Thank you so much for this conversation today and for coming back on the show. It's been awesome getting to touch base with you again. Thank you so much, Amanda. It's been an honor and a pleasure. All right, friends, I hope that you enjoyed that episode of the podcast and that you learned a lot from Angela. I wanted to just take a moment to share with everyone here today that I've actually been working with Angela since we recorded the first episode back in the summer of 2021. She's helped me do some you know, touch-ups and some makeovers to my website. And it's been so awesome seeing some of the pages that were, you know, looking fine, but not amazing, really, really come to life. So 
If you are interested in maybe doing a touch up to your website, I would definitely recommend Angela's services. So definitely reach out to her. And if you head on over to my website at mbomyoga.com, you can check out some of the pages like the podcast page and the coaching page to see some of the updates that she made. And if you get in contact with her, let her know that it's because you heard this episode of the show. Of course, a huge thank you to our sponsor, Offering Tree. Make sure you check them out, offeringtree.com forward slash MBO. And thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next week. Bye for now.